Hi, this time I want to talk about how alchemy is represented in role-playing games and in other forms of entertainment. I want to give you some tips and advice on how to accurately represent alchemy in occult-themed role-playing games. For those of you that are new to the channel, this is my... Well, I have been producing horror and occult videos at halfway through September as a preparation for October and it's soon going to be uh, October 1st the month of Halloween and the mysterious, the macabre, the magical, all of that so this video is an attempt to give you some ideas some tips and advice on how to create horror adventures, scenarios, campaigns I'm going to propose a campaign framework and give you some general thoughts on how to use alchemy in horror adventures although alchemy isn't necessarily related to horror it is actually quite a mm, enlightening discipline as it is used in occult philosophy but because of many implications you can use it as a perfect tool for some horrific scenarios. I think alchemy is one of the things that has been most wrongfully represented in all sorts of things, in role-playing games, video games, anime, manga, comic books. So let's start by taking a look at alchemy from a fictional perspective, because there is actually uh, an alchemical reality that I will try to explain. So alchemy in fiction, it is usually expressed or represented as either some sort of sorcery or as a fantasy science or weird science. In my case, when it comes to my introduction to alchemy, I had heard about it every now and then when I was very young. So I don't remember my exact age. I think it was, I was like, 13 or 14 years old more or less and I saw this video game Secret of Evermore for the Super Nintendo it's a somewhat obscure game it's by back then it was Squaresoft I'm going to put a link in the description to the commercial from the, back then the commercial was so surreal evocative and haunting I can still remember that boys like Secret of Evermore, you know, like very haunting. You really need to take a look at that commercial. Those were video game commercials. So amazing. They didn't care about anything related to politics or the current trends and such. They just wanted to express something. It was art in its purest form. And you obtained those sorts of commercials. So amazing. And so... I was playing Secret of Evermore and to give you a, a short summary without spoilers it's basically a, a science fantasy adventure you go through so many different places that there are some stages that are more on the sci science fiction uh, side of things some other stages are kind of like uh, prehistorical situations there's also a world or um, just like a place that is kind of like ancient Egypt there's also a medieval stage such an amazing game and you control uh, a boy with his dog the dog accompanies you and attacks your enemies funny thing that sometimes dogs are used in games related to alchemy but okay in that game alchemy it's basically like magical attacks and some bonuses as well you took an ingredient or a reagent and you combined it with something else and you shot out some sort of blast or projected like a fireball sometimes you shielded yourself by using different combinations of substances so it's it could be considered like a combination of fantasy science with sorcery and you see so many other examples in, for example, in anime, Full Metal Alchemist. The main character is basically, because of many different things that happened in the anime and the manga, 
he's able to produce really over the top alchemical results without ingredients he just needs sometimes he supports himself by using the terrain around him but that is completely divorced from true alchemy or at least alchemy as it is treated in the lab because many people ignore that there is actually a scientific side to alchemy a potentially dangerous side beyond the occult aspect of it so in many different things role-playing games video games comic books alchemy is handled very over the top like a weird science or um, fantasy science discipline to call it like that that produces some very amazing astonishing results instantaneous even mm. so when i started to play secret of evermore i had very little knowledge of alchemy before that i didn't know i didn't know anything to be honest that is you only knew like oh it is this ancient art or science and who knows what you can do with it you know that it's somewhat somehow related to the philosopher's stone and many things like that so i started to dig deep into what is alchemy what is the reality behind alchemy some role-playing games give us somewhat decent approach to alchemy you have different combination of reagents materials to produce some chemical effects that are quite over the top for example pathfinder first edition the alchemist character class you have these mutagens that you can create to you drink them or consume them in some way and your body changes a bit like dr jekyll and mr hyde it's still very exaggerated very over the top some substances you can actually throw them like bombs but it's still a bit more taken a bit away from a more sorcery based employment of alchemy in games in this video when it comes to the campaign framework i am going to base it on occult history the history that the mainstream doesn't want you to know because it is inconvenient for the establishment for governments for religions, for the current world situation even. So, let's take a look at the real alchemy. Like I said, there is a scientific and a more spiritual or philosophical or artistic side to that craft. Some of you could be thinking, well, if alchemy is so amazing, so great, why isn't it more popular when compared to chemistry? And that's actually a funny thing because chemistry was born from the more superficial aspects of alchemy. You had these individuals in the Middle Ages and Renaissance known as puffers. Puffers were basically, they were called puffers because you had that tool that I forget the name, like, you know, like, kind of like, like a puffing instrument you pump air uh, through it uh, when you are trying to control the temperature of, of some sort of preparation you are uh, puffing air and so the puffers were those individuals that tried to explore or penetrate the mysteries of alchemy but most of them failed of course but they still managed to learn the more superficial aspects the reactions of different uh, chemical substances what we know today as chemistry that is they knew the properties and the ways on how to work with herbs and metal but like i said in a very superficial way in a way that almost everyone can do or can accomplish that is they can work chemistry without further preparation a further training or discipline and what do i mean by this if you take the most skilled chemist and you take someone that is decent when it comes to chemistry but it is a very 
a very spiritual person. And you could say that is quite advanced in terms of psychic development. It's that sort of person that follows uh, his or her own gut feeling. And sometimes they download these messages from some place. Some call it like it's a message from God or from the angels or uh, from some, some sort of entity. And you give each of them the same materials and you put them to work in the same laboratory to create a specific yes to carry out a specific experiment and both of them if the chemist is completely materialistic he won't be able to produce the needed results let's say that you wanted to create a certain type of stone not the philosopher's stone that is the most difficult and the highest achievement in alchemy but let's say that you want to create a more simple version, a very, an immensely simplified version. And the guy that is decent in chemistry, but like I said, it's, it's, he's a more spiritual person, is going to produce that, that result with no problem at all. While the chemist could try again and again and again and again, and he won't be able to produce that result. So, it is related a lot with the spirit of the person. And this is according to occult philosophy, of course. Like I said, if you don't think that such things are real or possible, you could still take what I talk about in a fictional context and apply it to your um, campaigns and adventures in role-playing games. But you really need to explore the full potential of humanity. Just take a look at what you can accomplish with the Wim Hof Method. If you don't know what the Wim Hof Method is, please check out the video in the description below. Pretty much anyone who dedicates himself or herself to the method, and that is completely free, don't think that is some sort of thing that you can sell to people, that is Wim Hof has a tutorial in his channel that you can apply to your own life and you can see how you are able to withstand the coldest and hottest temperatures are pretty hot. Of course, you're not going to like boil yourself with hot water, but you're going to be able to survive in the hottest climates. You will be able to plunge yourself into the most, almost, like I said, very cold water. Going, Wing Hof has been able to swim under the ice with uh, no change to his body temperature. He, currently holds, I don't know how many Guinness records, when he's basically encased in ice and he's able to remain like that for two hours or more. I don't remember the exact time, please uh, look that out, uh, look that over. It has been scientifically proven by different laboratories. So the Wim Hof method is an example of alchemy applied to the body, not through the use of particular substances, but by breathing and uh, a mental focus and tranquility Wim Hof himself has said that his method with his method you become an alchemist of your own body and there are other examples like for example sun gazing I made a video about uh, the sun gazing method I'm going to put it in the description below when you um, added only two times of the day where the UV index is at its lowest, you can, in a very controlled way, uh, progressively, you can look at the sun and obtain its energy through your eyes, but like I said, it, there are only two moments when you can do this, when you can accomplish this. Please check out the uh, explanation in the description, because it's if you are not careful, you can end up damaging your eyes. But I carried out the entire process of sun gazing. That is, you could say that I, three or four years, I have been doing it for three or four years. There is a moment where you reach 45 minutes of looking at the sun during that, those particular times, and then you go down back to uh, 15 minutes if you want or less. And I still carry out the method to this day and I am not blind. So you really need to become a scientist. Don't let others fool you telling you that something is not possible or that uh, you should be afraid of doing this or that because this is going to happen to you etc 
you're going to hurt yourself in some way just take a look at those of us that have applied the Wim Hof method and sun gazing and you will see you can carry out your own experiments carefully so for example in the case of Wim Hof you just don't throw yourself into the coldest waters and go into the hottest temperatures it's a, a gradual preparation but like uh, I have mentioned in this in other videos I've um, I haven't taken a, a shower with hot water in about I think it's eight years now I only shower in cold water even during winter so you can see the the results clearly for yourself like I said don't believe me look to those that uh, are nearby close to you that have already done the method or you can do it yourself like I said very carefully according to what Wim Hof instructs in indicates in his channel and you will see that there are many things that are being kept hidden from us so that's the sort of preparation you need to carry out with alchemy and what, what's the the basis of alchemy what what is alchemy all about many alchemists say that alchemy is about raising vibrations taking a very simple thing and putting it to the highest result the most noblest of causes that's why so many alchemical substances they result in great health those mythical properties of uh, extending your lifespan uh, rejuvenating yourself all sorts of incredible healing properties mm. by the way if this video is taken down by some reason because YouTube loves taking videos down that apply logic and reason to things that were kept in myth and legend uh, please check out my uh, backup channel in Odyssey there are so many great channels that were taken down because they spoke against the mainstream like the rabbit hole the Spiros Koras J Myers documentaries some of those videos you can find in Odyssey I'm going to actually put a video uh, to one of the surviving videos of J Myers documentaries so you can see how certain people do some obscure things but okay like I said the alchemist tries to raise the vibration of different things and there is a bit of conflict or discussion when it comes to or debates to, to what exactly qualifies as that because maybe someone has great knowledge in herbs and metal and that person knows to which tea which herbal infusion to use to treat almost any sort of ailment or maybe you know the use of metals like for example colloidal silver that has been used successfully to treat so-called incurable uh, diseases incurable diseases and the BBC yes that uh, mainstream media they backpedaled when they could no longer fool people a few years back they started to say that the colloidal silver was deadly and poisonous and they started uh, here in, in America you had like CNN and all of those uh, news outlets promoting this guy that he had taken colloidal silver and he had his skin completely blue you probably saw the images of that shield he was completely blue and with yes uh, he looked like a smurf but it was a hoax well anyone that has intelligence has um, anyone with a three digit IQ knows that that is a hoax because anyone who has experimented and used colloidal silver you know that your skin does not turn blue so insane people are always being kept in ignorance through that disinformation but then if you search the BBC uh, colloidal silver BBC or something like that uh, now they are saying oh yes colloidal silver is actually quite beneficial because they were cut in their lives don't let yourself be brainwashed by those stats and the statistics and the data just try out the experiments for yourself carefully cautiously and you will see the truth 
So, going back to alchemy, you have all of, the, all of those different remedies having to do with herbs and metals and all of that, but there is a, a deeper philosophy behind all of it. An alchemist basically takes something. It separates that something. Let's say that you're working with herbs. You take a particular herb and through the use of heat and oil, it's a bit more complex than that. You separate that reagent, that ingredient in, in parts. They could be considered the physical and the spiritual components of that material because alchemists consider that everything is spiritual in its essence. So you take those se separate pieces, you purify them through different processes involving the use of other substances or heat, and then you, after the separate parts have been properly purified, you combine them once more. You combine them, and after some time has passed, you obtain some miraculous tinctures or stones. It depends on the work. And it becomes a lot more complex than that. Depending on what you want to achieve, like for example, maybe someone want, wants to approach the Philosopher's Stone, then you start to think how to combine a metallic substance with a vegetable substance, that is, you try to combine the realms of the mineral with the vegetable to accelerate the evolution of the mineral realm. Because many of you know that when it comes to formations of stones and metals, they take a long time to develop, so to speak, their structures advance so slow I don't know the exact number of years, but it takes so much time for those precious minerals to regenerate, so to speak, or to rep reproduce, let's call them like that. Let's call it like that. Although it is still quite inaccurate, it has more to do with the male and female polarities, alchemical stuff. But when it comes to the vegetable, a plant, a tree, grows a bit faster when compared to minerals. The tree, the plant, the flowers, the grass, it grows considerably more, considerably faster, rapidly. Mm. So the Philosopher's Stone, it is actually a somewhat well-known method on how to produce a stone by some occult circles. But the reason why few attempt it is because you would need, at the very least, if everything goes well, yes, you would need about 22 years to carry out the entire process. And it would be so expensive. There must be some secret, because otherwise alchemists of old wouldn't even attempt such a procedure. But maybe it's because of present times where they are overcharging for so many things, for many of the different substances that you would need to employ in such a long process, that it becomes so expensive. You need who knows how many thousands of dollars. No. If you are to take care of your family and you were to steal, you had to engage in, in the works, Yes, who knows how many thousands of dollars you will have to spend per year to carry out the process. Like I said, maybe there is some other way. But if you take a look at that certain process, imagine you spend 22 years of your life and if anything in that process is ruined, if you mess up any part of the process, it all goes to waste. Maybe you spent 21 years of your life carrying out the experiment. Oops, you messed it up time to start over. So yes, not many people will attempt to carry out that process. And that process is potentially deadly as well. You know how alchemists use codes and symbols to communicate their different methods, their knowledge. Have you ever seen that image of a knight fighting against a green dragon? 
that many different religions try to pull to their side you know how religions always try to steal things they say oh that's because it belongs to our religion so they take the, those archetypes and they try to use them for their own dogmas and doctrine but the real meaning of the knight fighting against the dragon is the alchemist handling a very specific very poisonous substance that i am not going to mention because well like i said it's somewhat delicate information and if you breathe in the fumes of that substance let alone drink it when it is not ready you can end up killing yourself in alchemy it is said that the greatest the most miraculous substances are produced from the most deadliest of poisons the deadliest of poisons sorry so yes it's all quite mysterious don't you think now let's move on to uh, that campaign framework that i was telling you about another thing well the, you know you know it well it, like i said I, I must stress out or put emphasis in that if you want to know the truth you need to to really do the work to do your own research don't just let them brainwash <laughs> just brainwash you into thinking or hypnotizing you that to, that those things have no no deeper meaning you're going to see all of those people like i said this is not to criticize the the, the person itself unless that person is evil of course it is a, a criticism or an attack against those conditions you see many people that are fat or at the very least skinny fat they are bald they need glasses their eyesight is damaged they have horrible looking skin they are constantly getting sick they are chronically ill physically and mentally they suffer from depression they, like i said they have all sorts of respiratory and digestive issues they are constantly in lack of energy and they are the ones telling you what's best for your body why their own bodies serve as an example of what not to do with your life and you take a, a look at the persons that have more a spiritual approach and that are still grounded in reality that they take good care of their bodies and you see them that they become healthier and healthier and stronger and as they age just take a look at all of those humble fishing villages and those rural areas where people carry out their folk remedies and they haven't taken poisonous poisonous substances into their bodies you know how they want to push a certain poisonous substance into you and they are living 19 90 100 years even and considerably more vigorous when compared to someone who is quite polluted in the city so yes the results speak for themselves many people like to just just like talk without knowing anything if you want people to to trust you you need to show them the results so okay this campaign framework has to do with the middle ages this is the version that is not accepted by the mainstream during different points of time like today <coughs> governments religions corporations intelligence agencies they want to reduce the population because back to the middle ages if there are few peasants they won't revolt when the powers that be carry out their evil upon the world men and women of justice will revolt so if you manage to kill them before they do that problem solved so back in the middle ages you had the black death the black death resulted from a flea that carried a bacteria these fleas would have been stopped if the church didn't order cats to die they said that the cats were the agents of evil forces that the cats belonged to the devil and all of that and they started to kill cats and tell people to kill cats because they were evil the cats ate normally hunted the rats 
that had those fleas. The cats would have died in the process, would have sacrificed themselves for humanity. It's quite amazing how cats are so intelligent. You see so many of those cases, even here in YouTube videos of, for example, little children that got lost or that were being attacked by dogs or that were dying from cold when they got lost in some very cold area and the cats protected them. The cat uh, protected, there was this case of a very young child, that child was pre basically freezing to death and a cat came along and wrapped itself around the, the child. The cat didn't need to do that, the cat is a survivalist. A cat can go into different uh, houses and places where they have heaters. They are also quite sturdy when it comes to resisting temperatures, both cold and hot temperatures, and the cat basically rescued that child. And there are those videos where a, a child is being attacked by a, a dog and the cat goes, a cat that isn't even from the family of the child, goes and rescue the, the, rescues the, chi the child from the dog. So cats are truly, I consider them protectors of humanity. Every major civilization, every prosperous major civilization has had cats amongst the, amongst the citizens. So the cats would have protected the uh, people from the, from the bacteria carried by the fleas if they had been able to hunt those rats. But the church, with the plan of uh, reducing the population, they said that they should kill, that people should kill the cats. And a few years ago, even here in YouTube, there were a few shields with their YouTube channels promoting the killing of cats. Once again, trying to get people sick because cats kill so many vermin. And they started to say all of those crazy things that cats were making birds go extinct while they have always existed in nature in harmony with birds. It's part of the circle of life. They also said that you were going to get, uh, what would you say, toxoplasmosis, that disease. You can only get that disease if you eat the excrement of cats. Or if you are constantly like, you will have to lick the tongue of a cat to get, to be at risk of getting that. So it was quite insane. Or maybe someone like took the excrement of a cat, the cat droppings, and maybe if you didn't wash your hands and you put them inside your mouth, maybe you could get toxoplasmosis. I think that's the correct name. So you have all of those uh, evil YouTubers spreading out that information, but it didn't work out that and many other agendas didn't work. So they were kicked out of YouTube when they no longer serve uh, their purpose. They are demoted to Facebook or Twitter, or one of those places. So yeah, it was very pathetic on their part, trying to promote the killing of cats. But moving on to this campaign framework. So it is the, the plan of the church to kill those cats but, so that the Black Death spreads easily, more easily. But you had the problem of witches and alchemists and men of true science. Those people knew the remedies to fight the, the infection, the bacteria. For example, there are so many... Uh, I don't know if this could put the video at risk. Remember what I said about silver? Uh, do some research on the effects of silver on bacteria and viruses. So there were several methods that those alchemists and witches and magicians and all of that could have employed against the Black Death. So what's the answer for the nobles and the church to get rid of those inconvenient people? Burn them because they are evil. They work for the devil, so kill them. They ask for the killing of all of those people. That way they won't be able to fight against the Black Death. They won't be able to use their knowledge concerning metals and herbs to fight those diseases. And so the Black Death spread about killing who knows how many people, reducing the population problem solved. That's why so much knowledge was lost, because they killed all of those people. So my proposed camp campaign, sorry, campaign framework is that the player characters are either people, townsfolk that are trying to survive 
the Black Death, or maybe they themselves are alchemists or witches or magicians or whatever. Astrologers, sometimes they said that they were astrologers as well, that are trying to fight off the disease, but they have to fight against the church and the nobility that are trying to kill them. Depending on the period of the, or just like the time frame of that campaign, you could also introduce, maybe it happens later on, the great fires that happened in, in different cities that were not accidental, not, not like nowadays. Those wildfires are usually not that wild. They don't happen just like that. At least not those that happen conveniently in areas where they want to build cities or railroads or malls, etc. So you have a complex campaign that could perhaps span ac across the centuries. You could be playing as player characters in the Middle Ages, then in the Renaissance, then during the Industrial Revolution, etc. The enemies, like I said, they could be the nobles, the church, and those that serve them. Even other peasants that have been brainwashed by the church and the nobility to attack people that of true science and philosophy. So it, was, it would be a very challenging campaign. You could also add a bit of, of magic, depending on how much of how... How, how you handle the element of low fantasy or high fantasy. I think there are some role-playing games very well suited for that, like for example Ars Magica. In my opinion, it is one of the best ways to represent the power, the iron grip of the church in a, a fictional way. So yes, you, you take your role-playing game of preference and you have that campaign framework with the player characters desperately fighting against this oncoming, the spread of the disease, fighting against the church and nobility. Very challenging, potentially grim dark. It's, going, it's not guaranteed that there will be a happy ending. And if you want to take it into modern times, you could create this insanity related to a certain illness, let's put it like that, so that this video is not taken down, and how they present a certain remedy to get people even more sick. Let's go back to the Middle Ages. Remember those plague doctors with their canes? Let's say that the tip of the canes of the plague doctors are quite sharp or pointy. And let's say that the plague doctor pokes a corpse of someone who died from the Black Death and then pokes someone healthy with the excuse. The plague doctor jabs that person with the excuse of verifying if that person is sick or keeping a distance from that person, effectively putting the bacteria inside of the person. Remember that, putting the bacteria inside of the person through that prodding cane that uh, punctures the person. So the plague doctors could also be enemies in that campaign. And now let's move to how you could use alchemy in horror adventures or scenarios. Alchemy itself is supposed to be used, like I said, with the most noble of intentions. But there are those that attempt the impossible not to obtain a breakthrough, but just to see what, to satisfy their own selfish desires. You could explore the whole homunculus experiment. There are rumors that in the 1800s and early 1900s, some people created these beings, a miniature human. And when they showcase these beings to their different organizations and yes you could say like fraternities and orders everybody wanted to know the secret and so the, those individuals usually tend to disappear because they didn't want people to pester them on how to create those um, humanoids imagine just imagine a tyrant thinking about how to create a, an army of clones kind of like star wars but it's still quite unethical in my opinion. 
if that were to be true and you create a miniature being wouldn't that being feel quite lonely being one of its kind or even if there are more of them they are obviously separated because a lot of alchemists do not work together they work separately so those beings would lead a somewhat sad existence there are many things involved with the uh, reproduction that is the biological process between those beings are they male or female so you can use this in horror adventures of a mad alchemist that is somehow producing these these beings even during the times for example in the times of organizations like the Golden Dawn, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and, it, and even after that, for example, here in America, and I mean the entire continent, of course, uh, well, uh, well, it's very difficult to pinpoint some places, but, for example, in the USA, there was somewhat of a boom of alchemy. A few, what would you say, like about... 100 years ago even or perhaps even less yes about around 100 years ago or even about 70 or 50 years ago there was a bit of a boom in the usa you had these people that came from europe most of them have been escaping from the ravages of world war ii because you know that ah, can you say this word well nazis the Nazis wanted people to either, those people that were knowledgeable in the occult and all of that, they either worked for them or they were killed or kept as prisoners. So many escaped to America. And I don't think that the Nazis are the only bad guys. The Allies also had their own. They were quite evil as well. It's all about the theater of war, making profits, reducing population, and getting rid of decent people. Don't fall into the divide and conquer strategy. It's about the decent people of the world against the corrupt powers. So these people made their way into America and they started to share the knowledge of alchemy. So it is said that there were actually photographs of these small crab-like creatures that were actually created through alchemy, the creation of life so you could explore that aspect maybe there is a mad alchemist that is actually creating those creatures but for evil like the typical resident evil or biohazard scenario when it comes to the horrors of alchemy yes i think the attempts to combine combine the the organic combine the the organic with the metallic in a more profane way is a good source of horror anything related to cloning and uh, the modification of the body to the point that the human becomes a monster all of that can be explored there is a survival horror game i don't want to give you the title to avoid spoilers in case you play it but in that game you basically have a mad alchemist that in order to become immortal because that alchemist couldn't produce the philosopher's stone that supposedly gives you immortality as according to the legend of Nicolas Flamel, for example, the, he, he cloned himself several times in an attempt to achieve immortality of moving his soul from one clone to the other. But it happened somewhat similar to that period in Forgotten Realms, the setting for Dungeons and Dragons, old school Forgotten Realms. You had this Manchun, this magic user, evil magic user, he cloned himself in an attempt to move his soul from one clone to another. But all of the clones rebelled and there was this war between clones to, to see who was the real Manchun. So in this video game, you also had clones and they all wanted to be the, the original one, the real alchemist. But one of those clones had a child and that child was taken by the original alchemist the master the evil mastermind and he basically wanted to get 
that daughter of his clone pregnant with his own seed to give birth to him once again there is a scene in the game where he kneels uh, before the captured uh, woman and he says you are about to give birth to me all over again very creepy so that that's a good idea for a horror scenario so basically take anything related to alchemy and distorted or twisted in the most awful way possible to have those horror scenarios, adventures, uh, campaigns. The possibilities are limitless. Conrad Dippel, another alchemist, he had a very macabre lifestyle. He actually took residence in Frankenstein Castle. I am not joking. There is actually a Frankenstein Castle. Look for Conrad Dippel. I'm going to put I'll see if I can find some videos on him to put a link in the description and he was actually carrying out experiments with the corpses in that castle and he developed this thing called Dippel's blood that it seems to be some sort of performance enhancer and many it is said that some armies use the Dippel's blood for for their soldiers to fight better who knows what exactly that substance was Yes, definitely look into the history and the rumors and legends of Conrad Dippel for uh, some examples on... Well, I don't think... I don't know if he was exactly evil, but because of the whole thing, living in Frankenstein Castle alone with all of those corpses, that, that seems like something like a necromancer would do, like an evil necromancer. So I hope this video serves as information for you, for your scenarios, campaigns, like I said, everything that I talked about in this video has to do with occult history and philosophy. If you think that it doesn't make sense, uh, just use it as fictional material for your campaigns, adventure scenarios, etc. But I still highly recommend that you do not take things uh, for granted or as, are, as they are presented in the mainstream. If you want to know, to know the truth, to find out the truth about something, carry out your own experiments find out the truth do your own research sometimes it's easier than you would believe it that you would think as presented in modern education thanks for watching this video and if you have any comments or questions please let me know and thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through rpg gift certificates if anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you, and if you have any other ideas or suggestions for occult or creepy things to talk about in this month of October related to games and fiction and all of that, please let me know in the comments. Thank you. See you later.